Of the many elements that make up this annual feast of fun and frivolity, along with a chance to shout, he's behind you, is an opportunity to step into the extraordinary mind of the teams that design the wonderful costumes that we see on the stage. And of course, there's been so many, the leading ladies and gentlemen, the good fairy, the evil villain, there's the boys and girls of the chorus, and of course, the dames and the ugly sisters. <laughs> From Cinderella and Aladdin to Dick Whittington, Peter Pan, Babes in the Wood and Jack in the Beanstalk, the creative brains that are entrusted to produce the colourful and occasionally outrageous designs that we've all admired have delivered year on year. One of the big things, particularly for children, this is their probably first experience of a theatre, and the colours um, coming out, and the costumes, because the costumes have got to tell the story as well. I mean, it would be no good doing sort of a three Goldilocks and the Three Bear type clothes for Aladdin, and nor would Aladdin sit well in Little Red Riding Hood. So you've got to follow the theme, and I think you've got to overemphasize the theme. I trained in the fashion business, and it's only the last sort of four or five years that I've really got heavily into this business. And the different colours look right on stage, and you know, um, Des Barrett, who directs it, will say, "No, you, you should use this with with that colour." And I'll think, "No, we can't put those two together." I'm afraid he's always right, but then he's had years of experience on the stage, and they do work, and the colours do look good together. What really helped me to begin to get to Hook is when you start to, to, to dress up at Hook, because you get the wig and you have the big frock coat and you have the boots and the frilly shirt uh, and the moustache and then you have the hook and when you get all of that on all of a sudden you do physically change and I come from quite a physical practice so all of a sudden you are physically finding out how it is to be dressed as this person so that's that starts and how you operate with only one hand and a hook which is rubber and doesn't <laughs> stay where you think it's going to be and you find that you're pointing it all in the wrong places. So that starts, that starts to get you in there and almost going to do things and forgetting you've got it. You know, you're poking yourself in the eye and fortunately it's rubber. So, so yeah, th th things like that and just, just knowing that you've always got to hold it all the time. You have so many costumes and they're so outlandish and for me the more outlandish the better and the ones I, I enjoy more are because I'm a big person I love the ones that take the mickey out of being a big person so I'm a big bra on and if I have some tight tops and like little short skirts that always causes a laugh and if you have anything where you have a big chest and a big bum the audience just laugh as soon as you walk on so that's always great last year I was Sarah the cook so Mike had made me a lovely costume. We had like a frying pan on with eggs and tomatoes and sausages. But I think my favourite one was during like the Dalmatians, when that came up, 101 Dalmatians, 102 Dalmatians. I had a Dalmatian costume again that Mike had made, which was literally in the Dalmatian, looked like Dalmatian fur, and I actually had a Dalmatian on my hat, on the head. And that was a, a great one, that was. I've had several mishaps with costumes. The worst was when I was playing Cinderella at Western Supermare, which was probably in the 70s or early 80s. And I had a, I was Cinderella, and Cinderella wears a hoop under a big dress when she's at the ball and, and midnight is about to strike. But they, because it's cheap in pantomime, the hoop didn't have any material in between the rungs. So um, we're waltzing with the stroke of midnight going dong, dong, dong. I had he high heels on and as I went to dance like this, I got my heel caught in one of the hoops. In the story, what happens with Cinderella, you have to leave the glittery slipper on the steps for the prince to find her later on. But I have to be up there by that midnight because a girl dressed up in me rags has to run on while I run off. In other words, magically, I've gone back into me rags. I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. So anyway, I had to hop up the back of the stage with this crinoline going like this to the stroke of midnight. I hopped off and I got to about midnight and I thought I hadn't left me shoe on the stage because it's stuck here. So I threw it on. And the girl dressed in rags came on and sort of ran across. And it was just awful, awful moment. 